So you're looking into getting your particle analysis operation the best it can be. And the Rotap sieve shaker looks perfect. But then there's also the Alpine Airjet sieve, which kind of also looks perfect. So which one is right for my process? I'll explain everything, so stick around. Hey there, what's up? My name's Andrew Kotlar, and there's quite a few options when it comes to choosing particle analysis equipment. There's all the different Rotap models, computer particle analyzers, test sieves, and the Alpine Airjet sieves. But the main two that are often compared are the Rotaps and the Alpine Airjet sieve. So, is one better than the other? WS Tyler has been a leading manufacturer and innovator in the particle analysis industry for over 110 years, and we strive to help your particle size analysis process be the best it can be. So, in this video, we'll compare the two in material type and size, cost, noise level, installation, ease of operation, accuracy, time and speed, data in reporting, and lastly, maintenance. The Alpine E200 LS is a vacuum-powered air jet sieve meant for specialized uses in particle size determination. It uses a vacuum's air pressure to push air through a single screen from the bottom, which causes the particles on that screen to crash against the sieve lid, break apart, and the undersized non-agglomerated particles fall through the screen apertures. A Rotap is a particle analysis machine that is used in all kinds of industries to test and separate particles. An oscillating motion is used to shake particles down through a series of different test sieves. Basically, the machine holds a stack of sieves and then shakes the stack so that the material falls through each sieve and gets collected at the different size openings. The machine was created to get consistent, repeatable results that are way more reproducible than hand sieving. The Alpine Airjet E200 LS is used for dry sieving, typically fine agglomerated dry particles down to 10 microns. And the sieve shaker can sieve pretty much any material you need it to. Wet, dry, large, small, all the way down to 20 microns. But this is all dependent on the sieves you use in your shaker. So there's four different software levels available with the E200 LS, depending on your needs. So essentially, your Airjet sieve can cost you anywhere between $10,300 and $18,600. There's a lot of different models for sieve shakers, but a good estimate when it comes to cost is around $1,507 to $6,630. But this only includes the sieve shaker itself and does not include the test sieves that you'll need. The Alpine works with an industrial vacuum cleaner, so there's some noise with the operation, but it's less than the Rotap. Because of the way a sieve shaker is designed, they can be quite noisy. The Rotap sieve shaker was designed to use a, a hammer to assist in the agitation of particles to help them find the sieve openings. So the machine runs at around 85 decibels. But to help with the noise, you can purchase a sound enclosure cabinet. The noise level can increase depending on the types of material you're testing. For the Alpine, installation is dependent on the needs of the customer. If it's just the E200 LS Basic, you can connect it to the scale, hook up the vacuum and the power source, and start measuring. But if you're doing a full-scale E200 LS security level install, it can take up to two days on-site to get the device fully connected to the network, program in all the appropriate users, create your audit trail, and occasionally complete IQOQ documentation. As for the sieve shaker, it's basically a plug-and-play unit. An instruction manual is included to guide the setup, but it's nothing a lab technician or operator can't handle. There's a few parts to set up, and then it's as simple as plugging the machine in, adding your sieve stack, and you're ready to run your samples. The Alpine unit is definitely a bigger learning curve for the administrator, but it's a very easy operation once it's properly set up. SOPs can be programmed into the Alpine if you're not on the basic unit that will walk operators through how to run test procedures. They'll even reject commands when an operator puts the wrong sieve on during the SOP because the RFID chip in the sieve will not correspond with the procedure. And all levels of e-control the software are capable of weighing and exporting results, even creating a distribution curve. Sieve Shakers have been around for a long time, and they're pretty standard. Rotaps aren't overly complicated machines that are hard to run. They do have a lot of parts and are still an operating machine, but they don't require a lot of technical skill or experience. Since the E200 LS sieves one screen at a time with the ability to break up agglomerated particles, the Alpine is extremely accurate. As long as the material types and representative samples are the same, you'll yield repeatable results. But as far as repeating the same results with the previously tested materials, 
Uh, that's more tricky. The undersized particles that fall through the sieve during your analysis will be carried through the sieve and into the vacuum to be later disposed of. This makes running the exact same material twice kind of impossible. There's peripheral devices like the Cyclone that will collect the fine materials after testing. This can be added to your E200 LS, which will remedy the problem. So for the row tap, one of the main things to keep in mind when sieving with either test sieves alone or in the sieve shaker is human error. Even though the row tap is doing the physical shaking motion, there's still a possibility for human error in reporting or analyzing. So for the Alpine, you definitely save time and human error by calculating results in the e-control software. But if you want to determine particle size distribution for a large sieve stack, you have to run the material one sieve at a time. This can be done with the software in two methods. The sample is placed on the finest mesh and run. Then the remainder is transferred to the next largest sieve and so forth. The sample is divided into as many samples since you have size class for your sieves. Each full sample is run on each individual sieve. This method is more exact but requires a larger sample. The Swiss method takes longer but is more exact. The average time it takes to run a sieve stack on a road tap is 8 to 10 minutes. You'll need to run through the analysis a few times to determine the exact time for your material, and this doesn't include the time of analyzing the results. This is usually fine for people who aren't doing more than a few tests a day or who aren't running their machines all day. The reporting is extremely precise on the E200 LS. Depending on your needs and your software level, you can either have the results calculated and recorded in the Alpine, you can have every test result immediately printed for record keeping, or you can have everything archived and e-signed on your audit trail. When doing a sieve analysis with a sieve shaker, you're getting particle size distribution analysis, which means you're able to test each of the samples in each sieve. As far as information on each individual particle, you're kind of limited, and the data recording must be done manually by a technician. The E200 LS can recognize the screen by its RFID chip and will count down uses and let you know when it's time to thoroughly clean it. The screens can be used a little bit longer in between cleanings because the machine is powered by air. There's also a sieve cleaning function that allows you to place empty sieves over the air nozzle and run for some time to dislodge the, the blinded apertures. But this is meant for minor cleanings. Uh, thorough cleanings will still need to be done at regular intervals. That being said, the air jet sieve does require a bit of maintenance. It's recommended to routinely clean the air jet sieve after testing and also scheduling a yearly calibration, deep clean, and maintenance routine to make sure the vacuum pressure is within acceptable tolerances and to diagnose any filters or lines that need to be replaced. As for the road taps, they're mechanical machines with a lot of parts. Those parts do suffer wear and tear over time, and it's not uncommon to need to replace parts or oil the machine. We sell maintenance kits complete with some of the most common parts that need to be replaced because although it happens, usually the problem can be solved in-house. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, fill out a contact us form so we can answer your specific questions. Just click the link in the description. And if you'd like to learn more about Woven Wire Mesh or our many products, we have a learning center filled with written and video content to make you an expert. Just click that second link and you'll be that expert in no time. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring that bell to keep up with all things WS Tyler. Once again, my name is Andrew Kotlar and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye for now.